Well, the world is currently in a global pandemic. The streets and stores are barren of toilet paper, countries are on lockdown, and pretty much everything has been cancelled. All of this for a measly little virus that's no more deadly than the flu, right? Wrong. COVID-19 is no joke, and in order to understand how we should be approaching the current media pandemic, we need to understand just what it is, how it works, and how dangerous it can be. So first, what are coronaviruses? Coronaviruses are a family of viruses that cause illness. Things like the common cold are caused by a type of coronavirus, and even things as dangerous as Middle East Respiratory Symptom or MERS is caused by coronaviruses. These viruses have a varying level of danger in how they affect the patient, but are related in how they function in spread. The viruses are known as zoonotic, according to the CDC, which means that they can be carried and transmitted between animals and people. For example, SARS, a type of coronavirus, was transmitted from civet cats to humans when the outbreak first began in 2002 in China. There are also coronaviruses that are currently infecting animals that haven't yet crossed over to humans. Coronaviruses themselves are made up of one strip of RNA covered in spiked proteins. Under close examination, these spikes look like crowns, which is why the viruses have the name corona, which means crown in Latin. These spike proteins allow the virus to attach to host cells, which then allow the virus to inject its RNA into the nucleus of the host cell. This causes the host cell to start making more of the virus. Stepping back for a moment, coronaviruses are defined as common viruses that infect humans that lead to upper respiratory infections. They spread throughout coughing or sneezing, through the air, close personal contact, touching contaminated surfaces, and through fecal matter. Most coronaviruses cause runny noses, sore throats, general unwellness, cough, and fever. Stepping back a little bit further, viruses in general are biological agents that reproduce inside the cells of hosts. Viruses attach themselves to cells and ultimately take control of the cell's function. This is different to bacteria that have their own cell structure and don't hijack the host's cell. Most viruses ultimately cause diseases, unlike bacteria. Diseases like AIDS, herpes, or chickenpox are common virus-caused ailments. So, now that we've defined what a coronavirus is, what a virus is, and understand their basic function, we can begin to understand how COVID-19 is spreading. Coronaviruses in general, and COVID-19 specifically, spread through the various forms of contact we mentioned before, through close person-to-person -person contact, through contaminated surfaces, and even through people who aren't showing symptoms yet. Part of what makes COVID-19 so scary is the fact that it can take up to 14 days for people to show symptoms. So, 14 days that people could be spreading the virus before they even figure out if they might have it. COVID-19 has shown that it spreads rapidly and very easily, thus why so much of the world has gone into lockdown and quarantine to halt the spread. Most people that get the virus develop a dry cough with a fever and a possible sore throat or headache. There's another thing we need to mention here as well. On the surface, COVID-19 may just seem like another form of the common cold but it's much more dangerous when you look at the science and statistics. To understand how much and how much gravity and precaution we should take, we need to understand the death rates that we've seen from the virus outbreak. So how deadly is COVID-19? Looking at the data, we can easily compare the death rates of COVID-19 to the common flu, which many are comparing it to. Breaking down the data by age group, we can see ages 0 to 19 have a death rate of 0.004% with the flu, whereas COVID-19 has seen a death rate of 0.1% for the same age group. While percentage-wise this still isn't a lot, it's important to realize that this number is roughly 14 to 25 times higher than the seasonal flu. However, the 0 to 19 age group is the least at risk. Looking to people ages 20 to 49, the seasonal flu has a death rate of 0.02%, whereas COVID-19 has a death rate of 0.3%. This is 6 to 16 times higher than the seasonal flu. Quantifying this number, it means that 3 in every 1,000 20 to 49-year-olds infected with COVID-19 
will unfortunately pass away. Moving along to the next age bracket, 50 to 60, the death rates get worse. The seasonal flu has a death rate of 0.06% for this age group, whereas COVID-19 has a death rate of 1.3%. That equates to a little over every 1 in 100 people that get COVID-19 ages 50 to 60 will die, compared to just barely 1 in every 1,000 with the seasonal flu. Finally, looking at the oldest age bracket, ages 60 plus, the outlook is more grim. The seasonal flu has a death rate of 0.8% in these age brackets, where COVID-19 has a death rate of 6%. That ultimately means that one in every 100 people over the age of 60 to 65 infected with the seasonal flu will pass away, compared to six out of every 100 with COVID-19 four to seven times as risky for this age group. Overall, COVID-19 has an averaged death rate of anywhere between 2.3 and 3.4%, and this number is constantly changing as more data comes in, and it's also variant based on geographical location and governmental response in that region. So COVID-19 is much more deadly than the common flu and even the common cold, and without preventative measures, it will reach as many cases as we see with the common flu, if not many more, but the death rate will be even higher. We've seen many people say that the common flu has killed far more people than COVID-19 so far, but the common flu is also protected against, and we know about it, and it's been around for a long time. COVID-19 has no vaccine, it's fairly new, and we're still at the beginning of the bell curve of cases. There are a few metrics that do indicate, however, that COVID-19 may not be as bad as it's been made out to be in the media, though. Scientists estimate that those infected with COVID-19 will roughly infect 2 to 3.11 other people on average, according to data gathered by Vox and various other sources. This is more than the seasonal flu's numbers of 1.3 people, but much less than something like measles, that is 11 to 18 people, or Zika, which was 3 to 6.6. Chinese death rates also have declined as the virus has been addressed, which is a good sign. However, this isn't an indication that the virus is getting weaker, just that China's quarantine measures and medical system have raised to the necessary bar to fight the pandemic or China is underreporting deaths and cases to make themselves look better, but we don't know that without severe speculation. If we trust this decline in death rate and case uptake, it's a strong argument that the steps the rest of the world is taking, as in Europe and China, to quarantine and address the spread of the disease are the proper steps. It's highly likely that people will look back on the efforts taken to stop the spread of the coronavirus as extreme because not many people got the virus, which still is yet to be seen. It's important to remember, though, that after all of these cancellations and preventative steps have been taken, if we don't see massive infection, it means that those steps that we took were the right ones. We know how infectious COVID-19 is. Under normal circumstances, if no preventative action was taken, it's estimated that over half of the world's population would contract it. Knowing that, if we see anything less than that spread, we know that the preventative measures that the world in certain geographical regions took were ultimately effective. So, stop making fun of event cancellations and quarantines. They may seem extreme, but they're probably the right steps to take to prevent the spread of a massively contagious new virus. However, also understand that most people will be okay and have mild symptoms with COVID-19. While you might be a fully healthy 25-year-old who could fight off the disease, remember that the quarantine isn't necessarily for you. It's for your 70-year-old neighbor who isn't strong enough to fight it off. COVID-19 isn't the end of the world, but it's a serious threat to a significant portion of the world's population. Listen to governing bodies, follow quarantine measures, and help stop the spread of this pandemic. I'm going to link to a few different resources covering the best things you can do during this time to protect yourself, some of the first symptoms that you'll notice with COVID-19 versus another disease or virus or cold or bacterial infection, whatever it may be. Just make sure that you pay attention to the science behind the subject, not the media necessarily, and help stop the spread of the virus. Links in the description below.